Today we're going to paint a miniature from my favorite miniature game, A Song of Ice and Fire. Hi guys, Jonathan from Two Raven Studios. If you're new here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. We release new painting videos every week and you do not want to miss out. This week we're going to be painting Cersei Lannister from a Song of Ice and Fire miniature game by Come On Games, which is my personal favorite game to play. So what we're going to be doing on this miniature is a quick dirty paint job. We're not looking to win any awards, we're just looking to get it painted quickly. Today's going to be a good lesson that if you have a plan for a miniature and it doesn't work out, to not give up. Because my original plan for this miniature did not work out, but I just pivoted and decided to use a different technique and finished it off and it came out pretty decent. So you may have noticed that the miniature is painted green. And I'm going to go on a book nerd rant here. You often see Cersei painted red in the artwork. Most people paint this miniature red. In the show, she's wearing a red dress. And it's just because she's a Lannister, so figure, people figure she wears red. If you've read the books, you know that is not actually accurate. More often than not, Cersei wears green dresses. The reason is she wants the dress to bring out the color of her green eyes. So if you've read the book, you'll notice that most of the gowns she wears is described as being green. So we're going to paint with a green velvet dress not going to use the oils or any of the airbrush or any fancy techniques I normally use. We're just going to get right into it with regular brushes. So grab your paints and follow right along. So before we start painting the miniature, we need to clean the mold lines off. And that can be kind of difficult on PVC. So you see this line running all around the miniature. So the way we're going to clean that off, we could use a knife, but I find what works best is using little sanding sticks. So they come in different grits. This one right here, you can see it's kind of worn a little bit. I've been using this one a lot. So you just rub across the mold line with the sanding stick. You could use an emery board here too, this similar concept. But I find this gives you the best results. Um, PVC sometimes gets chewed up if you try to use different ways to clean it, but that works well. Next up, we're going to cut in the design that I want on the base here. So we're just gonna cut in bricks. So what I'm doing is using my X-Acto blade and just cutting in a straight line. And then what I'm going to do is once this line is deep enough, I'm going to change angles a little bit and come in again. Kind of see right here, I'm going to come in at this angle like this. And we're cutting a V groove into the uh, miniature base. And my finger is not as close to the blade as it looks like. Don't cut yourself here. If you're doing it yourself, be careful. Um, and once you have that cut in, you just can pop that out and move along. You can do these as tight together, as far apart as you want, depending on what type of stonework you're going for. So pretty simple process, just cutting into the base to give me, us a little bit of a stone design. I'm not going to go too in depth with what I'm doing here because this was where I messed up, but all I have is three different colors of green contrast paints and I'm wet blending them on the miniature for my highlights and shadows. This is a really good technique and you can get some good results, um, but because of my priming here, which I'll explain in a second, this did not work out. But that's all I'm doing is just blending these three different um, contrast paints. So I have Dark Angels Green, Orc Flesh, and Warp Lightning. And creating a gradient from lighter colors to darker colors by wet blending these paints right on the miniature. So this is where things went wrong. So if I've had this problem with contrast before, so I tried to make it not happen here, but it happened anyway. I don't know if it's something in contrast medium, and if you've had the same thing happen to you, let me know in the comments below. But the medium of the contrast pulled up 
the ink that was underneath. So I primed this miniature black and then used white ink to give it a zenithal highlight. And I know sometimes the contrast has a tendency to reactivate that ink when it goes on it. So I gave it plenty of time to dry to make sure it wouldn't happen, but it still happened. So when I was trying to blend the colors together, they started becoming milky because that white ink underneath started mixing with the contrast on top. So I realized at this point the contrast blending that I was trying was not going to work. So what I did instead was pulled out my wet palette. I haven't used scale 75 paints in a while, so I brought out some scale 75 paints and just kept right on going on top of what I already painted. So follow right along now with the new plan for this miniature. On the palette we have Toxic Waste Green, Slimer Green, Green Skin Flesh, and finally Misfits Green. So what we're going to be doing is just using all of these paints kind of back and forth to add some texture and highlights and shadows onto what we already have on the miniature. So as you can kind of see, I'm dotting as I'm moving along on these highlights and shadows. Um, I'm trying to create texture because, as I said in the beginning, I want this to look like velvet almost. And velvet has a very distinctive texture on it. So we want to add those dots to get that texture. So obviously the toxic waste green is our brightest color, so that's going to be on the brightest uh, highlights and then the misfit screen is actually a very dark color that we can use to deepen the shadows so I create mid-tones between the two and just really play around kind of going back and forth between all these colors until I'm happy so you can kind of watch what I'm doing in the techniques but it's just I'm not going specifically highlight shadow highlight shadow I'm just switching between all these colors and mixes between them to give the results I want So next up, I want to further the highlights. What I did was put some Moonray Flesh onto the palette, and we're mixing that with the Toxic Waste screen and using the Moonray Flesh by itself just to give us a little bit of brighter highlights to make those shiny parts pop out even more. So just You want this to cover just a very small area and give us the brightest highlights on the dress.
Next up, we're using Despair Green to deepen the shadows a little bit. This color also is a little bit bluish. It's like a bluish green, so it's also going to add a little bit of interest into the shadows by adding some new tones in there. So kind of the opposite of what we did with the last color. We're just doing this small areas in the deepest shadows. You can kind of change the angle of the miniature to get to the spots you need, but doing kind of the insides of the arms and just the deepest folds in the dress here. We're going to paint the little bands around the arms and the top of the dress with gold. This is my standard recipe, starting with Necro Gold from Scale 75. So just base coat all these areas with the Necro Gold. Then we're going to highlight with Peridot Alchemy. As I said, if you've watched any of my other videos, this is my standard gold recipe that I use for almost everything. So just little highlights around with the Peridot Alchemy. And further refine those highlights with speed metal. So you always want to use a uh, silver as the highest highlight for your gold to make it really pop. Next up, we're just base coating all the flesh with Midland flesh from P3. Um, it doesn't matter; you can mix different brands. We're just using the P3 here because it's the closest thing I had when I was painting. That's the first pot of paint I grabbed. What we're using is Voluptuous Pink from Citadel Contrast. Thin down a little bit just to shade all the skin. So just going around the whole miniature and shading the parts we painted in the previous step. And we're going to go back to the Midland Flesh and re-highlight everything we just shaded down. So shade made a little bit too dark. We just want to bring the original base color back in in most of the parts. Now we're going to further highlight by adding Moonray Flesh to the Midland Flesh. I just used the Moonray Flesh because it was already on the palette and using the same color to highlight different areas in the miniature also helps to tie the whole thing together. So it was already on the palette, worked well, so we're just adding that into the Midland Flesh, using it by itself and adding more highlights onto the skin. As I headbutt the camera, I'm painting the eyes here. I'm using Sickly Skin from P3. This color is almost white. It's just what I normally use instead of white, so I'm not using a pure white. The camera was having a hard time with the white of the hair, so I just wanted to get rid of it. So I'm using Rucksack Tan to base the hair. Just This is just for the camera, and then we're going to move back on to painting the eyes. So what I'm using is the Despair Green, the darkest green we did on the dress, to paint in the dots in the eyes. PVC miniatures tend to have very soft face detail, and I normally don't paint the eyes. I just figured I'd do it here, and I kind of regret doing it. It would have been better just to leave them in shadow, but we're just furthering the um, eyes by painting in the pupils with Despair Green. So now what I did was mix some Bloodfest Crimson in with the Midland Flesh and I'm going back around the eyes to kind of reshape them a little bit because when you paint eyes it's kind of hard to get the perfect in the sockets so I'm reshaping them by putting this around the edges. It's also using it to um, add some more shadows to the skin here and there where I feel it needs it. 
So using just different concentrations of the Midland Flesh and Bloodfest Crimson together just to paint the shadows wherever I feel need them. And I'm just going to let you watch me paint because I'm tired of trying to say Flesh then Bloodfest in a row because it's a bit of a tongue twister. Now that the skin sorted out, we're going to redo the hair and finish it off. So what I'm using here is snakebite leather contrast and I'm just kind of shading all the shadows down a little bit with this color. So using it kind of as a wash, but you really don't want it to pull any of the surfaces. We really just want to hit the shadows with this color. And then this step, what I'm using is one of my favorite colors, Mediocre from P3. And again, the Moonray Flush, it's still on the palette and it's going to help tie everything together. So just mixes of these two paints to add in highlights to the hair. When you're highlighting hair, you almost want to do it like you're highlighting non-metallic metal and have very sharp highlights. It's going to make the hair look silkier. So you can kind of notice I'm starting to create that band around the crown of the head there where there's the most reflection. So just play around with the hair using these two colors in different uh, concentrations to highlight the hair up. just going to further the highlights on the hair by using sickly skin. Like I said, you could use white here. I just always use sickly skin in place of white normally because it's just a, it's a very subtle off-white. So just reinforce everything we already did. This wants to cover smaller hair area. You don't want to cover up the work we've already done. You just want to enhance it. kind of see where we're at right now. I wasn't happy with the dress because with the hair, the hair looks very shiny. It made the dress look less shiny. So what I did was took the sickly skin, mixed it with some Moonray flesh, and just add a little bit further highlights to the dress to make it look a little sh more shiny. Like I said, I'm going for satin, so I want it to look a little bit shiny. So the hair made it, kind of, by contrast, made it look less shiny. I need to add more highlights to it here. Now we're going to paint the base. I have Beast Hide from P3 and Bastion Gray from P3 and just wet blending it together on the base. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. We're not looking to pick out particular blocks in one color and then the other. It's just the whole thing's getting wet blended together, these two colors.
So you can kind of see the result from that. Now I have wildwood contrast and we're shading the recesses mainly. We're going to use some water and feather it out everywhere on the base. You can kind of see I'm trying to not have it pull on the surfaces as much and just let it really soak in those recesses. These bases have a texture on them which this wash is really going to pull out of the base. Now we're just going to add some highlights. Uh, first is Trollbot highlight from P3. Just going around the edges of all these blocks and adding little highlights. Kind of like I did on the bases that I painted earlier this week. Uh, same concept here. Just dot along those edges and give us some nice little highlights. And since everything else was highlighted with Moon Ray Flesh, I just added a little bit to, of that to the Troll Blood highlight and further refined those edges. So just picking out spots here and there just to give them a little bit more pop. And once you're done this, the miniature is finished. So this is the end result of our work. You can kind of see dress looks pretty shiny, hair looks shiny, looks decent. Um, I'm not completely happy with this miniature. I may go back with some oils and really pop out everything on here, but I didn't want to do that for this. I wanted to keep it more simple, just the acrylic paints. I didn't want to get into oils here. But this is what it looks like in the end if you follow the steps that I just did. So that was painting Cersei Lannister from Song of Ice and Fire. I hope you found it useful. If you did, I would appreciate a like. And if you have any comments about this video or anything you'd like to see me do in the future, let me know below. We release new videos every Tuesday and Friday, so if you don't want to miss out, please subscribe over here. And there's some going to be some videos over here that you might find helpful as well. So until next time, keep on gaming and paint your minis.